SEOs. So the tension in the room just went down about five notches. Instead, we said, Google gives a lot of advice. White hat best practices. How much do we take advantage of those best practices on our own website? The answers are a little bit scary, and we published them on our blog earlier today. Now, there's one thing that works in Google's favor, which is that we practically swim in page rank. The fact is that we don't do anything special for ourselves, we don't do anything unfair, but starting around 2002, we became one of the most linked to domains on the web. When I dug into this, what shocked me was the simple fact that Google, to the best of my knowledge, does not have any team that works full-time on SEO. I found that very hard to believe, but Google optimizes for the user experience. We tend not to think about how sites are going to look inside of search engines. In fact, some Google properties come to me and my team and ask for SEO advice. I don't want to give anything that's private advice, so a great guy on my team, Brandon, Brandon Falls, made an SEO starter guide, and that way we can publish it publicly. When a property comes to me, I can send them to the public information that everybody else gets. I wanted to show you a really quick joke slide where someone said, what if Google optimized for search engines? <laughs> Woo, I'm glad our website doesn't look like this. The fact is that we optimize for users, and so even a small number of changes can help. Now, what was the methodology of our study? We took over 100 Google properties. We said, how do we score in terms of meta description tags, consistent internal linkage, title tags, all those sorts of good stuff? What did the results look like? Not that great. In fact, only a third of the properties even had a meta description tag. That's SEO 101. That's a very simple way that you can tell search engines how you want your snippets to show up in the search results. We didn't even have that. That's like the very simplest thing you can fix. Here are three example bad snippets. The first one is literally a legal disclaimer. The middle one was basically empty except for a language. The bottom one, we didn't even crawl. It's horribly, horribly bad. But this is my favorite bad snippet. If you look at Google Patent Search, they took the page from Google Book Search, copied it and pasted it, and never changed Google Book Search. So when you do a search for Google Patent Search, it looks like it's for Google Book Search. Again, a very easy fix. Now, what is kind of interesting is something that's kind of hard to change is the internal linkage of your site, trying to be consistent. We had a three-way tie between product.google.com, google.com slash product, and google.com slash product with a trailing slash. Again, the sort of thing where your user doesn't know what to type. Here's a really bad example. Four completely different URLs all served up the exact same content all on our web server. Again, this is the sort of thing where users don't really like that. Search engines have to sort this out. We do it pretty well, but if you can do it yourself, it's even better. Now, the report wasn't all bad. For example, Google named its products pretty well. Google Book Search, Google News. But on our title tags, we tend to just put the product name. We miss out on an opportunity to include two or three simple keywords that are white hat and completely descriptive. Oh, I'm a little sad about this slide. Less than half of the time, whenever you have the link from the logo, did it go to the preferred URL that we actually wanted to have show up on our site. So let me just show you a couple examples. If you were to click on the link on Google Mobile Ads, it would actually take you to a 404 page. 